Common Sense Conservative Deputy Leader Melissa Lansman and future Conservative Member of Parliament Roman Babber. I think all three of us are very grateful that the Pride of Israel Synagogue has invited us to be here today and we share with the congregants here uh, the love of this country and the gratitude for the promise it made all of us. The promise was very simple. If you work hard, you get a powerful pension and paycheck that buys you affordable food, gas, and homes in safe neighborhoods, that anyone from anywhere can do anything, and that you're safe, respected, and free, whether you wear a yarmulke, a crucifix, or even a Toronto Maple Leafs hat. You can feel free to express yourself however you like, and you can be left alone in peace that uh, we live in a country where it doesn't matter if your name is Martin or Mohammed, Singh, Smith, or Steinberg. You're free to be yourself and live your life. That was the promise. But after nine years of Trudeau and the NDP Liberals, that promise is broken. Everything costs more. Food price inflation has been 36% higher in Canada than in the United States of America because of our brutal carbon tax. One in 10 Torontonians now have to go to a food bank every single month. There are 1,400 homeless encampments in Ontario after nine years of Trudeau and the NDP Liberals. They've doubled the debt, doubled housing costs, given Canadians the worst mortgage debt as a share of GDP of any G7 country. Today, Stats Canada reported that the gap between rich and poor is at its highest level in recorded history. After NDP liberal money printing inflated the assets of the super rich while inflating the cost of living for everyone else. And the parliamentary budget officer released another report today on the carbon tax. And that report confirmed everything I've been saying about this horrible tax this ripoff, it showed that 60% of Canadians pay more in the carbon tax than they get back in rebates, 100% of middle class Canadians lose out, and that gap will get worse as the government goes ahead with its Liberal NDP plan to quadruple the tax to 61 cents a litre over the next five and a half years. 61 cents a litre will mean we have among the highest fuel taxes in the world. Next door in the U.S., they have no carbon tax. Our trucks, our businesses, our workers, our money will pour over the border, leaving behind a nuclear winter for our economy. Grocery stores won't be able to get their goods. Factories won't be able to get their parts. Workers won't be able to get their paychecks as Trucks can no longer afford to fuel the transportation of the essentials of life. And that will mean desperate poverty for countless people. That's why we need a carbon tax election where Canadians can choose between a 61 cent a litre carbon tax or axing the carbon tax altogether. An NDP liberal costly carbon tax coalition that tax your food, punish your work, take your money, double your housing costs, and unleash crime and chaos, or common-sense conservatives who will axe the tax, build the homes, fix the budget, and stop the crime. The worst crime of all is the crimes that have been targeting our Jewish communities. We have seen a 251% increase in hate crimes in Canada under Trudeau and the NDP Liberals. Those crimes were up 165% before October 7th. And while the attacks of that day are haunt us still, we cannot blame the chaos on our streets on some foreign problem. This, crime, this hate crime targeting our Jewish people and our countless other peoples was out of control before then. And by the way, there have been wars in the Middle East for decades. They didn't spill onto our streets in the, 1860, in the 1967 war, in the War of Yom Kippur, the two intifadas, the Hezbollah-Israel War of 2006, 
We didn't have firebombings of synagogues in Canada during those conflicts. We didn't have bullets flying through the window of children's schools during those conflicts. We didn't have bricks throwing through the windows of the pride of Israel during those conflicts. What has changed? What has changed is we have a prime minister with a radical and divisive ideology that turns Canadian against Canadian. He has broken our borders. He has allowed repeat violent criminals to run free in our streets. He's allowed ISIS terrorists to come in through our immigration system even after they were videotaped cutting up human bodies uh, in the Middle East as part of the ISIS organization. They come into Canada and he gives them citizenship in this country where they plot to carry out new terrorist attacks. Justin Trudeau is not worth the cost, crime, chaos, and he's not worth the risk of terrorism. Furthermore, we have known terrorist groups operating, able to operate legally and with impunity in Canada. I pointed out the other day Samadun, which held these horrific protests where they were calling for death to Israel, death to America, death to Canada. They burned our flag. These monsters are a front for another terrorist group in the Middle East that has been banned for 20 years. The Americans yeah, the Europeans and other countries have tackled this terrorist group, but why in Canada does Justin Trudeau continue to pander to these terrorist supporters by allowing them to operate legally, even when they have violated our anti-terrorism laws? Another example, of course, is the Houthis. Now, the Houthis have been operating on our country, even though they can operate in our country. We don't know for sure if they have because we don't have laws to stop or even surveil it. But the Houthis are a front for the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, an organization that is the biggest and most well-organized terrorist group in the world, which supports Hamas and Hezbollah. This organization murdered 55 Canadian citizens by shooting a missile at a civilian aircraft over Iran, blowing it out of the sky four years ago, and yet Trudeau allowed them to stay legal, raising money and terrorizing our people for years after that. Now, a related front group, the Houthis, continues to fire missiles at civilians, attack merchant ships that carry uh, critical uh, civilian and humanitarian aid, killing uh, civilian workers on those ships. The Americans banned the Houthis, Back in January, the Liberals at the time said they were thinking about it. What is there to think about? Since October 7th, the terrorist attacks, Houthi terrorists have disregarded international law. They carry out attacks in the Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden. According to the American Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken, since November 2023, the Houthis have launched unprecedented attacks against international maritime vessels in the Red Sea and Gulf of Aden, as well as military forces positioned in the area to defend the safety and security of commercial shipping. These attacks against international shipping have endangered mariners disrupted the free flow of commerce and interfered with the navigational rights and freedoms. Earlier this month, a Houthi spokesman celebrated the, uh, the attacks they had done and said they've targeted 193 ships linked to the Israeli, American, and British enemy. They've also launched hundreds of missiles at innocent Israeli civilians to support Hamas. The Houthis operate with the support of the criminal regime in Tehran who helped organize the October 7th attack. The murderous Iranian regime uses groups like Houthis, Hezbollah, and Hamas to spread violence and terror throughout the world. That's why the Americans have designated them as a terrorist group and they have called on others to do the same. Jewish Canadians and all Canadians deserve to feel safe. They deserve to know that they will not be targeted by terrorist groups that operate here, money, launder money here, finance organized crime here, and foment hatred here. And for these reasons, common sense conservatives are calling on the NDP Liberal government to list the Houthis as a terror group under Section 83.05 of the anti-terrorism law. That will allow our law enforcement the power 
to seize their bank accounts, shut down their operations, criminalize recruitment, logistics, and planning on Canadian soil to keep our people safe. And safety is what we want. We want peace again. We want to bring home the country we knew and still love, where anyone from anywhere can do anything, where hard work earns a powerful paycheck that buys affordable food, gas, and homes in safe communities. That's the Canada we knew. That's the Canada we love. Let's bring it home. Thank you. We'll now take questions from the floor. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Previere, for this uh, important press conference. And uh, actually, we know that Canada is a place for all, not for terrorists and terrorism. What we have seen in the last few years, <coughs> that uh, some weird demonstrations, I call it chaos, that include people who <clears throat> insult Canada and uh, wish death to our beautiful country. And the most painful thing is um, to burn my flag, my Canadian flag. This is so painful for all of the Canadians. Uh, the people who do this uh, uh, are covering their faces. We don't know their identity. And this is also a big uh, problem because as um, a journalist and media, Canadian media from uh, Middle East roots, we receive some threats. My question is, why the police and the authorities do not take actions against this because it is not one time, two times, it is repeated over a long time and there is some violence, there is some threat for many people and we do not use to have Canada like this. If you, uh, in your position, you are the opposition leader, uh, what you can do to return Canada now and if you are the prime minister, God willing, what you can do to make our culture is quiet and safe again. Thank you very much for that question. And I'm so sorry that you have faced these threats. Uh, this is another example of our country devolving into chaos. Everything is broken. When we have patriotic journalists facing threats of violence from terrorist sympathizers, who now operate with impunity after nine years of Trudeau and the NDP and their radical, divisive, dangerous ideologies. The police need to enforce existing laws and arrest anyone who's making these threats against journalists. We need to lock up violent offenders and keep them behind their bars with jail and not bail, with mandatory jail time for serious violent offenses. We need to ban the terrorist organizations that have been fomenting this hate and these attacks, Samadun, Houthis, and others. Samadun was on our streets two or three days ago celebrating the, genesis, the biggest attack on Jews since the Holocaust, burning our flags, organizing hatred, and making overt calls for, for violence against our people. Samadun, the Houthis, and their, their organizers should be arrested. They should be put behind bars. We should secure our borders to keep terrorists and, and those who work with them out of our country and our, keep, keep our country safe again. And we need a, a prime minister who will unite our people and bind up the wounds of the nation by bringing home the country that we knew and still love. Thank you. Next question. Um, Shahrzad Ghani from Epoch Times Persian. Uh, Mr. Polyev, uh, now IRGC is listed as a terrorist organization. What is your plan in the future as um, like a Polyev's uh, government plan to take some actions? Looks like just listing IRGC as a terrorist organization is not enough. Um, what is your plan to just take some more actions specifically for Iranian community here to feel safe, that they're living in a safe environment without interference from um, Islamic Republic? And also, um, what actions can be taken to immediately deport some those who have ties with Islamic Republic? Thank you. Great question. And first of all, thank you to the courageous Persian population in Canada 
who have consistently stood up against the regime in Tehran in massive demonstrations, which I have been honored to attend. The Persian community, like the Jewish community, is under attack. The IRGC and 700 Iranian agents are operating with impunity on our soil, threatening, harassing, abusing our Persian and Jewish people here in Canada. And it's time for the RCMP and the police to track down these agents, charge them, and if they are not citizens or permanent residents, they need to be expelled from our country. We see to top officials from the Iranian government that have been seen in gyms and living in mansions and enjoying the plunder that they stole from the Iranian people here in our country. They should be expelled from our country. We should issue deportations on them because they are terrorizing our Persian people here in Canada. We must make sure that IRGC cannot set up a proxy organization like they always do. That's what the Tehran does. The Tehran doesn't do it directly. They always get a proxy to do it. And so the Houthis could become that proxy in the future now that the IRGC is finally banned. We need to ban the Houthis. We need to quickly set up the foreign influence registry that the liberals have been dragging their feet on. And that way we can expose anyone who's working for a foreign dictatorship, jail them if they break the law, expel them if they are harassing our population. We will once and then make this a safe place for all Canadians, Persian Canadians, Jewish Canadians, P Canadians of all backgrounds. Thank you. Thank you. Next question. Hi, I'm Mr. Uh, Polyev. Good morning. I just wanted to pivot to, to something else. That You voted in favor of the Bloc Quebecois motion to boost uh, OAS for some seniors. Is this something your party will do uh, if elected? And I could just ask you to answer in English and French. Thank you. Thank you. After nine years of Trudeau and the NDP Liberals, seniors struggle to eat, heat, and house themselves. The rent has doubled. Mortgage payments have doubled. Food price inflation has been the worst in 40 years, and those prices have risen 36% faster in Canada than in the U.S., proving it's not a global phenomenon that's causing the higher grocery prices. It's here at home. We know that the carbon tax is principally responsible for the higher food prices. Of course, if you tax the farmer who grows the food and the trucker who ships the food, you tax all who buy the food. So we're of the view that seniors need more purchasing power. And that's what we signaled with that vote. There are other ways to do it, though. For example, by axing the carbon tax and lowering income tax, you can allow seniors to keep more of their pension and their retirement income and make those dollars go further. So as we develop our platform, we will bring forward a low tax plan that allows seniors to have more powerful pensions and to bring home the affordable prices that will allow them to have a dignified retirement, which the people who built our country deserve more than anyone else. Thank you. Thank you. Next question. Ms. Polyev, good morning. Uh, David Menzies with Rebel News. Um, given the immigration minister's shocking comments about the lack of security vetting for migrants, should Canada suspend bringing any more refugees from Gaza? We can't let anyone in unless they have been thoroughly vetted. All of their background, all of their um, affiliations need to be clearly vetted. Uh, because you're, you're quite right in saying that this government of Justin Trudeau has let in criminals and terrorists. In the case of, uh, think of this case of this apparent ISIS fighter who appears to have been in a video cutting up a human body on a crucifix in the Middle East. He did this, according to this video, before he was granted admission to Canada and then given citizenship in this country. And then finally, we had to arrest him because the French reached out and said they had intelligence that he was about to carry out a massive terrorist attack here in the greater Toronto area. And then there was a second terrorist who got into this, this country and then ultimately was preparing an attack on Jews from Canada to go to New York where he was going to kill uh, the Jewish population there. 
Justin Trudeau has lost control of our borders. His radical ideology, his total incompetence, and his appalling border policies are dangerous to the country. When I am Prime Minister, yes, we will welcome immigrants, but we will do so by vetting security and, and their lawfulness, and ensuring that the people who come here are safe and that our, our, our citizens are likewise safe. Thank you. This will be the final question. Uh, Jeff Gray, Globe and Mail. I wanted to ask another question about the PBO report, which also says that uh, according to Environment Canada data, the industrial carbon price is responsible for more greenhouse gas emissions than that, uh, the price for consumers. So are you committed to keeping that other, that the industrial carbon price in place? Well, the, as you know, the Liberals have given heavy industry an exemption from the carbon tax. Uh, they are under a different policy that is pretty much run by the provinces. Uh, the federal government uh, is not administering that policy in almost any province. Uh, it is provincial governments across the country that do that. My focus is on axing the carbon tax. The carbon tax, which has driven up gas and diesel by 17 cents a litre, has driven up home heating costs by hundreds of dollars every single year and which Trudeau plans to quadruple to 61 cents a litre, a policy that would cripple our economy and do nothing for the environment other than push production to dirty foreign dictatorships. Trudeau wants to push jobs and businesses out and global pollution up. I want to bring costs down so that we can bring home clean, green Canadian production to our economy. Let's axe the tax. Let's bring it home. ask you about involuntary treatment. Uh, in Ontario, this is something municipalities are calling for. Uh, the big city mayors, they, are, um, they started a motion on this and they are debating and updating the Health Care Act to, in, uh, to actually implement um, involuntary treatment. I know in the past you said you were open to it, but it, you, you, you needed more time to learn about it. So um, where do you currently stand on this? Thank you very much. Great question. Uh, we just... Uh, heard testimony from the parents of a beautiful young girl named Brianna from British Columbia who uh, the authorities released from a psychiatric hospital despite the fact that her parents had begged them to keep her in treatment. As a res She had stabbed her hand with a pencil. She was clearly a very big danger to herself. The system released her offered, of course, crack pipes and other drug paraphernalia for her to safely use drugs. She ended up in a homeless encampment where she died of an overdose, a teenager. There's no question in my mind that she should have been in mandatory, involuntary, psychiatric and substance abuse treatment rather than in a homeless encampment in a tent. So I believe for, sh for children, and for prisoners who are behind bars, there should be mandatory drug treatment when they, are, um, when, they, when they are found to be incapable of making decisions for themselves. Uh, for adults, again, I, I, I'm still doing a lot of research on how that would work. Uh, but what I, what I will say is we need to defund the unsafe government supply of drugs that the Trudeau and the NDP regimes are pushing on the population. We need to ban hard substances, start to prosecute drug criminals, scan the sh shipping containers to stop illegal drugs and guns from coming in, and treat addiction with rehab and recovery so that we can bring our loved ones home drug-free. Thank you very much. Thank you. Defense Minister Bill Blair told the Star yesterday that nuclear strikes on facilities, or strikes on nuclear facilities. Changed his mind. Contrary to the law of armed conflict, what, what is your response to that? He changed his mind today. You have to look at his flip flop today in committee. So, your stance on that? well, I've already stated my stance multiple times, but he, you should just note that uh, yesterday, the Liberals were saying that they had no problem with Iran, a, a, a genocidal, unstable terrorist regime that had killed 55 Canadian citizens 
and is threatened to wipe Israel and America off the map. The Liberals said they had no problem with that country and that dictatorship getting nuclear weapons. Today, Bill Blair flip-flopped in committee and said that there would be certain circumstances where a strike against a, a nuclear weapons manufacturing facility would be allowed. So you have to ask Bill Blair where he stands because he keeps changing his mind every single day. Uh, that's why we cannot trust Justin Trudeau and the NDP Liberals. They allowed the IRGC to remain legal in Canada for four years after it murdered 55 of our Canadian citizens. They allow 700 IRGC terrorist agents to, to terrorize our streets here in Canada. And as of yesterday, we're of the view that that unstable terrorist regime should be allowed to develop nuclear weapons that could kill millions of people. This is an example of just how dangerous and radical the NDP Liberal government has become. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.